Hey everybody, it's Elizabeth and welcome back to the channel. I want to start off by saying thank you for being here today. So I've not worked on any projects in the house in the last week and that's why you've not seen any videos on it. And I've just been busy with work stuff and I did receive half of my Timu, Timu order, but not the other half. So when that comes in in a couple of days, we'll be doing um, a haul video from there because it's the first time I've ever ordered with them. Everything was super dirt cheap. So I'm really eager to see the quality and what shows up. The first thing I want to mention is that it has been so hot here lately in Northeast Arkansas. Um, things are looking a little haggard and um, there are some different projects that I've done, little tiny side things I've done that I did not film so I'll be showing you those today as well. So you can just kind of see what they look like now. Um, nothing, it's nothing that's done that I've talked about but just several things. And if you've been with me for a while, I want to mention also, I have still not weeded a single thing in this growing season, you guys. But one thing I want to mention is, um, again, yeah, not weeded. Don't know why. I've just not cared enough to do it, I don't guess. And honestly, in most beds, they look fine, but in others, they look really bad. So I'm going to show you that today. I'm going to show you all the good, bad, and the ugly. And I'm going to try to not take too, too long. So I have time to show you landscape beds, um, raised kitchen garden, and the in-ground summer garden. Okay, so let's get to it. All right, starting here on the porch. I love my little container arrangement. You can tell my petunias and these two pots died, so we're just left with sweet potato vines. And the Monstera is doing wonderful. It's put on several new leaves. This is the newest one. You can tell how shiny it is. Um, these, this container here, um, it's so, the root is so big, it has to be watered daily. And I do water it daily, but it literally gets to looking like this, all sad, um, after like 12 hours. So I, I don't know if I would need to water it twice a day or what. Some of these brown leaves are maybe from a day where like I skipped watering. I don't know. It's wild. It's so, so needy, but beautiful when it's doing well. Over here is our lime tree in this container it's grown well it flowered this year which was cool um but it's not like booming i'll show you the other one so over here behind my tripod is our lemon tree and this one has grown a ton look at that so much it also flowered so i don't know if it's going to try and make anything but we'll just see one disappointing thing is this is a huge rose bush that's been here about 10 years and i say huge it usually fills up this whole area falls over onto the porch beautiful bi-colored oh walking through spider webs these beautiful bi-colored roses usually much bigger it's just not doing anything this year i'm not sure why we've got cats down here playing oh my god ernesto you got a frog what are you gonna do see the frog why you leave him alone, Ernesto? He's not even flopping away. Poor guy. Mercy. Okay. So, I'm going to start you out over here. This is our flower bed along the front of the porch. Always this time of year, the hostas look so haggard. It happens every year. I don't know what I could do any different. It's like they're just shocked from the heat. I don't know. This one is the worst, obviously. Typically what I do when this happens every year is when they all look like this, I'll go through and I'll cut back off of everything that's yellow so they're like half the size. They look bad for a month or two and then they'll kind of flush back and look decent for fall. I need to go through and cut these flower stems off. This, you guys, is a lovely, um, oh, what do you call it, succulent. And I can't think of what it's called right now. It's a variety that blooms three colors. Um, this is like, I put this in last year. It is now three times the size it was last year. And, um, and it's like budding up like it's going to flower, which is so cool. When I put it in last year and it was a baby, it was flowering at the time. And it's like orange. I think it's called fall something because it blooms in the fall. So we'll just have to wait and see together. But it looks like it's doing great. This is another one I put in this year. This guy right here. 
which I really love. I added it because you can see this bed is full of hostas. My dog just jumped in there trying to get one of the cats. This, oh, kitty, you scared me. Oh my gosh, these guys are creepers today. This is fringe flower, shirai's charm. I don't know what that's called. Anyways, it's really cool. But um, it gets these cute little blooms on it every so often. Usually after like a big rain, so it must love water. But so, that's, I love that here. We're going to check out the shade garden ever so briefly because it's one of the weediest spots. Okay, so we've got lilies over here. We've got monkey grass here. These lilies are flowering right now, which is lovely. These are all weeds. This is weeds. This, you can't even tell, but you guys, this is a fern in a container. That's from the other house. My, I had two, one died. This is from last spring. And I overwintered it inside. Um, and there's a container in there. So this is one of those areas that actually does bother me and I want to weed. It's that like weird morning glory vine weed. Not like the flower, but like the weed. That needs to come out. I cut back this rose because I don't like it. It needs to come out. So I've got a lot of work to do over here. There is like a hookara in here. Can you see that? The brown leaves right there. That's a hookara that is being smothered. Um, and there's a hosta right there. All of this. This is a weed that is so easy to pull. I've just literally put no effort into it. And then this is a weed tree like we have on the other side of the house. And I have appreciated that shade so much over there in the kitchen garden. I decided to leave it and see what happens. <laughs> over here was our yellow rose. That This is all that's come back this year. It's very, very sad. And it could be because this lemon balm is like a thief. You see how this, it goes from right there to right there. Every year I would usually come in and cut this back. There's also a yarrow over here somewhere. Here's the yarrow. You can barely see it. Looks like little ferny leaves right there. Look, this is weeds, you guys. This is weeds. That's weeds. That's another weed tree. It's bad. This area is the worst. But so used to it was herbs and hostas and herbs and hostas and roses and hostas and whatever. But it's just not put any effort, like zero, into it this year. That was a pink rose that's still there, but that's all it's done. Over here, this is a, what is this called? Uh, wormwood. This is wormwood. It, like the lemon balm, gets ferociously large. It has to be cut back. And I've not done it yet this year. Really need to do that. These are the two hydrangeas that used to die on me every early summer. I transplanted them here last year and they're finally thriving. But they've not bloomed yet this year, so they must be a variety that blooms on old wood. So I probably won't see blooms till next year. And there's a little elephant in here, elephant ear in here that survived. There were three. The other ones did not come up. I had like a, a giant elephant ear variety around about here. And I kept waiting for it to come up this year, but it never has. So that's a bummer. So see, all of this area could use a ton of cleaning. And we're just getting to that time of year where like the summer stuff some things that are more beautiful in the spring or early summer are fizzling out. This is a good example. These are gladiolas. They bloomed beautiful. They've been lovely. But now, some are hanging over. Dog plays in there. Whatever. Ooh, look. The first time this I've seen this canna bloom. So this is the impromptu bed I threw together beside the pool because I wanted a tropical themed bed. So we have um, cannas, which I transplanted from elsewhere in the yard. Brand new elephant ears I got this year. These are sunflowers. In the middle is a ornamental sweet potato vine in that chartreuse color. And it is spreading all across here and all across there. And then we have another sunflower, another elephant ear, and then another or more cannas over here. I need to weed in here really bad. And then that's a zinnia, that little guy right there. So there were some zinnias planted in here with the sunflowers. And so that one over there is the only one I see. Definitely need to weed over here. 
but I am loving that these sunflowers are peeking up over the pool. I can see them from inside the house and that just makes my heart happy. Can't wait for them to bloom. Okay, so I'm gonna show you some stuff over here in this side yard. Man, it's hot. Um, just really quickly, cause I never bring you over here. This is my zebra grass. I love it, so fun. Um, I've got glides here in front of the gas tank and they just need to kind of be deadheaded, just kind of cut the flowers off and leave the greenery. This is a bed where I've got a Japanese maple and then yarrow. And then this is a monkey grass, but everything else in here other than this yarrow is just like weeds. So this grows huge too. So we'll also come in and kind of deadhead and thin this out throughout the year. Over here is our tree log bed. My husband made me a couple years ago. Plant different things in here seasonally. This is the furthest away spot from where I have water. Um, and so I just water it when we've not had rain and sometimes I forget. So sometimes things are struggling. But right now they're doing like okay. You know, I've seen them look better. We've had a lot of rain this July compared to normal. But this is a, what's it called? Silver bells, I think, something like that. And these are begonias and they're a really beautiful variety. And then white petunias. And you can see here how beautiful these begonias are. I love them. The begonias are perennials. And I think these are too in certain zones. So when this bed starts to peter out, I will put those in the landscape. I'll pull them up under the landscape. All right, so we head this way. You can see the house. Hopefully you can hear me, it's quite windy. I'm not gonna show you much going on over here because there's not much. We've just got some evergreen shrubs. The butterfly bush is finally coming in, which it's late. It's always really late to, to leaf back out. So cute, so behind. Oh, got some things, let's see, over here. This is an herb. I think it's, uh, it's not, let's see, it's not thyme, it's oregano, that's what it is. Oregano, perennial herb. This is like three times the size it was last year, so that's super cool. This is a, we thought this was, um, what is it called honeysuckle and it is called a honeysuckle but it's a variety that actually makes into a small tree so it's getting very trunky here by our mailbox we're gonna have to dig it up and move it and then this is where the thyme is this is a creeping thyme variety it's very cute need to weed the roses have been kind of just not flowering a lot this year i don't know if it's from the heat or what this is a lilac tree and that's pretty much all that's exciting over there. Um, over here, we've got our beautiful hibiscus, dinner plate hibiscus, which is gotten so big and is so lovely. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Got our stone bird bath that I put in there this year. This is a pop tart hydrangea. And I need to trim these limbs right here of this crepe myrtle because it's not it's not getting enough of what it needs. You see, it's just tucked under there. And these leaves just really just branched out in like the last two weeks. They weren't down there before. These are super tunas and the uh, sweet potato vine. And it's finally growing a ton. It loves heat, really begins to thrive. So it's doing really good. That's lovely. You can see just random different weeds over here. I've got to get out. These are, this is a bee balm that's already flowered once this year. This is a rose that's not flowered since this spring. We've got our dog doing dog things and starting to dig in beds. Here's my Mexican petunias that are perennials and keep coming back every year. Look what Maple's doing over here. So annoying, so annoying. Okay, so here is the kitchen garden, which I'm loving. So much of it is thriving. We're having some difficulties. Wow, you can see the arch swaying in the wind because the cucumbers are so freaking heavy. Look how uh, lopsided that is. You see that? 
they're so big I have planted sugar snap peas on this left side for the fall but they're just they're gonna take forever to get up and I've even quit putting more arms over the top and just letting them hang down because it's getting so heavy so this year I did plant in the front of these blocks like you guys have recommended I do for years so I did and so this is another sweet potato vine and some pink petunias in these front blocks and what's funny is I did the same thing over here and look at the size difference this these are like sad okay so I've got dill here that has begun to die I've got lavender two tomato plants we got our first tomatoes from and then they got hit by a tomato hornworm and I had to spray them and and deep prune hard prune so they've been pitiful and just slowly slow slowly bouncing back this is two kale plants that's how giant it is two plants okay and look at these cucumbers you can see them they're just growing out this way towards me away from the arch and they're just pulling plants the the arch over <coughs> which i'm not really worried about like the arch falling or anything um it's really in there it's just a bummer oh my look there's one my husband must have missed my husband's always out here checking for cucumbers because he's the one that loves them. Look at that. Fun. Butterflies everywhere. Love that. Okay, getting over here in the shade, it's much nicer. Love that we added this arch or this uh, umbrella this year. This is an umbrella we've had for a while and I used it before over way out over in the field where I had my old cottage garden there was zero shade so I had this out there but we wanted our daughter's picnic table to be in the center of these four beds and so we had this here and we were actually using it a lot and so then my husband just drilled a hole in the center of it and we put the umbrella here so now it just stays here and it stays up um, unless there's like a big storm or something so when we swap over here you can see these are the sweet peas that I just sowed recently so they're starting they're not going to do a ton while it's so hot though they're a cool weather crop and then this is mostly my pepper bed this is a, a stevia plant here that is a perennial herb in our zone here's some more of the peas you can see them starting to get their little runner arm things so cute and we we did um sweet peppers let's see that one i've picked a lot on see here's some more i've got a lot of these ready um, picked them just recently they're really long this is a sweet variety I can't remember what it's called we've got petunia or marigolds here um, for beauty pollinators as well as companion planting because some pests just hate the smell of them and then over here we've got bell peppers in here somewhere we've got sweet um, jalapenos we got regular jalapenos and then we've got El Jefe jalapenos which I picked because my husband's name is Jeff and I thought it was funny Look at this, these, these arms of this plant. Like I just bopped my head on it. And I was like, what in the world? So I may need to get those arms that are hanging over there and go ahead and throw them up. Uh, it's just so wild to me that it's just gotten so big. Have you guys ever grown cucumbers and them get so big? I've seen people grow them on trellises before, but they usually just went up like, um, I don't know three or four feet <laughs> random okay and then here is the newer part of the garden like this this bed was not here like a month ago this one was here but it was shifted over to the right some because I had left this area open for specific plans that never panned out so what we did was we we took everything out of this bed we shifted it over so that it was in line with this bed and I've got bra mostly brassicas in there and then we added this bed and the reason it's a different color is because I decided to do this color so this fall when it's cooler out I'm going to repaint the original three this new blue color and so that'll be fun one new development that I'm really excited about is this plant right here being budded up this is a perennial hibiscus version of a plant um, it's like then the Rose of Sharon family and it gets to be seven to eight feet tall or more and these lovely blooms on it not like the dinner plate hibiscus you saw by the front door 
But this guy, I put it in last year by a water spigot. It was about half the size. All it ever did was get kind of green, but it would get stepped on by kids. I would deadhead it with the water hose. It just it had a rough life. So this spring, I moved it over here in what was my new bed because it's also for my sick plants. So this one and that one right there, which is an azalea bush, they were my, my sick plants that I've been babying and keeping an eye on. And this one is the first time it's ever bloomed and it's got like nine more buds on it. So I'm really excited. I'm gonna pick a new permanent spot for it pretty soon. I did plant a bunch of different herbs and stuff in these outer edges and they've not come up yet. Not sure why. Maybe just too hot, I'm not sure. But then right here is a borage plant that a friend gave me and it's actually growing right there, but it's like leaning over this trellis. I think because the cats play in this bed a lot and they're kind of, uh, because here is my second borage plant right there and they basically like just almost killed it. So, but what we have right here are my Kajari melons. And they have grown so much. Oh my goodness. If you think about like that last video that you might have seen, um, it, they were so small. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this guy over because I want him to kind of spread out further across the arch because I only have them planted right here. And so like, see this guy, oh my goodness, doing so good. Look at them. So cute. And this guy's already starting to flower. So that's gonna be fun. So he's gonna be the left side of the arch is a Kajari melons. The right side of this arch, we have basically some tomato plants leaning against it that are thriving. And then down here we have a mint plant in one of these little cubbies to keep it from spreading too much. Let's wrap around. This is a Rebecca flower I had planted somewhere else and it was dying so it's Kind of in a sick area it's a perennial flower over here we have what is this this looks like a broccoli here's a cabbage there's another baby cabbage in here this one is heading up decently there you go that size still got a ways to go and then you can see i've had some bug damage because i don't have these netted these are broccoli see some broccoli right there so that's fun i need to come over and um, support this tomato. Look at this is all just laying down. I need to support it up on this trellis because it's just sprawling this way. But I didn't intend for these to take up so much room or didn't really think that they would. Uh, but now they're kind of getting in the way because we've got new tomatoes down here. And in the, these holes down here, I planted the um, Chinese noodle bean to, to trellis up this side of the arch and look at they're looking really cute they've got multiple sets of leaves and i've got three i got four in here and some more i don't know if you can see them over there in that hole so i've just kind of got to get my tomatoes out of the way enough and supported so the noodle beans can start binding when they're ready <sighs> lovely so lovely everything's doing great Okay, so then over here is kind of like an impromptu flower bed area I made this spring with some plants that came from the other house when we moved. Petunias, pansies, uh, I think that's a gladiola or a lily. This is a rose bush. And then in the two containers, I've got some hostas. Because I had like six of these baby hostas I had gotten in the mail. And so I needed to put them somewhere. So there's three in there three in there different varieties they'll eventually go in the landscape here's one that was bigger I've got a tropical annual hibiscus in this container these will not overwinter here in northeast Arkansas unless I bring them in the house over winter I've done that multiple times maple no I have brought them in over winter multiple times uh, but they don't always survive so I usually just grow one a summer because I think they're so beautiful and I do love them. But the rest of my hibiscus throughout the property are perennial varieties. This is a really cute tropical looking thing that I got. But if I don't water it every day, it looks sad like this. So it is yearning for some water. 
This is what you hadn't seen in my last video is we went ahead and did the, the landscape fabric came to here the last time I did a video. Oh, and check out right here, the sunflowers that I planted in these spots, these are coming up. And these were the um, dwarf giant sunflowers. So I don't know how tall they'll get, but I'm hoping we have time to see them flower this year. Okay, anyways, coming back over here. Okay, so we added this, my husband and I did this um, just a few days ago and got this all down, which is so great. We went around this other perennial hibiscus I had transplanted here and it's finally coming back to life. It went through some major shock. Um, so really happy with that. Over here in these containers, most recently, I did like a plant with me video. Um, we've had almost no germination in this front one. This one is carrots and they did great. I'm gonna have to thin them. we we'll come over here. These are carrots, again, kind of spotty, but maybe enough to get something, so I'll thin them. And then this is a strawberry watermelon variety. No idea what to expect. I'm gonna let it do its thing. Three of them came up, so that's exciting. And then this is our Colorado blue spruce I need to get in the ground. And these are the morning glory vines I started in containers, and I thinned them out because actually like 10 came up per pot. There's one over there too. So, um, got those thinned, and then we got the arch set up. The yard does slightly slope here, so we had to, like, really kind of janky-fied, like, anchor it. <laughs> it looks wild, but it's staying, and I just keep telling myself, if this is our permanent setup, I'll spray paint that or something so they blend in. And then this purple fountain grass over here has been trying to die. What I will probably do when I plant it in the ground is I will probably cut it way back and hope that it comes back. It is a perennial grass and I love it, but it went through a lot of stress when I first got it. Our kittens would jump up in it, through it, around it. They love playing with it because it's so wispy and that's why I love it too. It's very beautiful. Definitely struggling now though. This is another one of those um, perennial hibiscus rose of Sharon, like I showed you in the bed that's finally blooming for the first time. This one has never bloomed, and it's the second year I've had it. You can see how small it is. It gets to be 8 to 10 feet tall. Here is my black hollyhock. This time of year, they lose um, up almost everything. They've got these big old stalks that they've sent up. And each one of these, you guys, is full of tons of flowers. See if I've lost any yet, if I can show you. See that? That's like at least 20 flowers. Do you see how many of those there are? Seed pods gl galore. So before I cut these back, I need to harvest all the seeds and then I'll cut it way back. This is the part that stays green all year long, even in snow, isn't that wild? It'll keep this kind of shrubby bottom part. This bed is so bad, I need to weed it so bad, it's horrible. This is why we stopped the landscape fabric here because what I need to come through and do now is remove all these bricks, weed all this, and then do the rest of the landscape fabric. So, that's the plan. I've got some pretty little perennial flowers in there. I've got a hosta back there. And then this is the, the second perennial hibiscus I transplanted from the cottage garden. It's finally growing. I thought it was going to just be dead, but it's finally doing something. We've got some random perennials throughout here. And I wanted to show you, look how terrible the gladiola bulbs look. This is what our pets do to them. Also wanted to show you this begonia bulb. We planted together in a video, as well as this one. The second one's finally coming up. First one is starting to bloom. Isn't that lovely? At least I think that's what that is. Yeah, these two are begonias, and this one is a stilby, so it's different. Okay, so one thing I want to mention before I walk over and show you the in-ground summer garden is that this area over here where we did that new fabric, we plan to mulch just like this right here. Um, we just finally mulched this like I don't know, maybe a month ago. Could be wrong, it could have been a few weeks. Uh, but anyway, so we've got to do that over there. We've got to finish um, the landscape fabric. So that's one of my next projects is, is taking up the bricks that run along the landscape bed along the house so that I can weed in there intensively, 
um, and do the landscape fabric up that way and then the landscape fabric will be done so I need to do that sooner than later so I can make sure I have enough landscape fabric because if not when we go for mulch I'll have to get more of the landscape fabric which has been a lot you guys and this right here the mulch in this front half this is 40 bags of mulch and it didn't quite go all the way to the end and so that area is about the same size as the front area and it's probably gonna need that much and in case you're new here and you've never seen my garden the plan for this back part is to be an outdoor living room with like a an outdoor couch and some chairs and a table for like setting and lounging and eating if we want and then also there will be pockets of flower beds throughout I may eventually in time add more raised beds for vegetables back there but we'll just see that area gets a lot of shade because of there's a really huge oak tree above so just like right now you can see this part right here is getting a little bit of Sun this is in shade and the front is in shade and so it's just a it's a part shade area which a lot of my plants even my heat loving plants really love because they appreciate the break from the hot afternoon sun now we're going to head out to our full sun in ground garden got cat rubbing all over my feet okay so a lot has happened out here since i've showed you this garden and i think when i came out here and showed it to you guys last time i just went down a few rows um but it's not too wet right now or anything and we've got some new development so we'll just check out everything as much as possible so here is a overall view this from here all the way to here what we've always done before is this has been my husband's in-ground garden we called it his because he just planted three or four crops uh, the same every year and this year we combined our gardening styles and this is our garden because I'm not doing my big garden that's 7,000 square feet is over on the other side of those trees. I didn't want to do it this year. It's too much work. So we did sunflowers here, tomatoes, um, zucchini, followed by gourds. And then we've got cucumbers, followed by yellow squash. And then we've got zinnias all along here. We left this gap open and let it grow up in grass just to have a path. And these are all vine crops. These are like 30 to 40 watermelon, squash, and pumpkin plants in there. So we wanted them separate from the rest of the garden so we could keep this tilled and weeded and lovely because that's impossible to do in a vine patch. So one thing I wanted to show you is some of our sunflowers are starting to flower, you guys. These are our first ones. Oh, so lovely. I can't wait really like this variety there are a lot of these that are opening up look how stunning you can see these little beauties starting to head up here and then there's some taller ones down there at the end i did have to come in and um sow some new seeds for ones that were missed so these are little baby sunflowers these guys are starting to head up that's fun we have a gap here in our tomatoes because this is probably a good five plants that we had here and we lost they've died these two are trying to die we've never planted sun, um, tomatoes in this back part of the garden and apparently there is something in the soil that those plants hate you see how everything else in the garden is thriving these are our remaining tomatoes they get bigger as they go down they were all planted at the same time they all have the same fertilizer but they're just these could not live it's just so sad we don't know what's going on definitely won't be planting tomatoes here again um, we usually have anywhere from 15 to 30 tomato plants and this year we've got like 12 so that's a bummer these are very lovely Ooh, so pretty so here are the rest of our tomatoes I mean they're finally loaded up with plants but they're I mean with tomatoes but they're just taking forever do much of anything and then we have some yellow squash down here that are just randomly not happy and I'm just gonna mention too I'm filming this like in the dead heat of the day it's like 1 p.m. today I'm gonna edit this and post this today so when you see this video no I just recorded it um, so it's hot so plants are doing their midday wilt which is totally normal they're still happy healthy plants here are our gourds we're growing just for fun we've got luffy gourds bird house gourds and i don't know if i got any spoon gourds in there or not um but they are 
really going to town, we're going to have to add another trellis because that's why we put this here. Because we want to be able to keep a walkway. Oh my God, the first gourd. Oh my God, grasshopper scared me. <laughs> Anyways, the first gourd. These, you guys, like I said in the last garden video, I literally grow these like sheerly for enjoyment. Make my heart happy. But see, see all these vines sticking up? I need to come out here like in a morning or something, untangle these guys, get them up on the trellis because these guys will get so long. They're growing into our yellow squash. Look at these flowers. Oh my goodness. So beautiful. You guys, zinnias for the win every year. Every year. Butterflies love them. Bees love them. Ew, here is a cactus variety. I love these, they're so floofy. So fun, but I also love these really light, delicate colors. So this is like a normal zinnia. But then when you get the frilly looking ones, like these guys, these are the cactus variety. These and these, so pretty. So I had to literally run in because it got so hot that my camera shut off. But I didn't get to show you the pumpkins, which is a bummer. I may try and run over there in just a minute and do that. Um, I don't know how many I can get. But what I wanted to say is one of my little watermelons that was like this size, like a cherry tomato, is now the size of like a grapefruit. So that's exciting because it's growing. And I found two more watermelon babies and several pumpkin babies. And some of the first original small pumpkins have turned white. So they're my Casper pumpkins, which is exciting. The other ones are just brown or like, you know, like a light yellow color. So I won't know for a while what variety those are. There it is, my first watermelon. And look at here. Oh my God, that one's even bigger. Look at that. Wow. I never saw him because he's dark. Different varieties and weeds. But look at these. Baby, baby, ah, it's so cute. All right, here are my white pumpkins. See how itty bitty? Look at that. Then we come down over here. There's another white one, another white one. Where was the other one? Oh, here. See, they're like yellow. See that guy? So cute. There's a little baby with a bloom. So the vines are doing really, really good, very weedy. And we're not gonna just leave them this way. <sighs> we plan to come out here and either hoe or till around them as much as possible to try and cut down on the weed pressure. But y'all, it's, it's so hot. It is like 93 right now with like 95% humidity. But anyway, so glad I could get my camera cooled back down and run out there and show you guys those. They're so cute. And anyways, hope you enjoyed today's tour. If you're new here and haven't subscribed yet, and you get out of breath walking fast in the heat, you should subscribe. You should join the YouTube family. And uh, I'm gonna hide over here under this, uh, wall of cucumbers really quick anyways love you have we would love to have you and have you stick around for future videos and anyways can't wait to see how all this grows and and pans out when we harvest from everything it's so fun and especially soon wrapping up some gardening projects like finishing the mulch and stuff like that it's just gonna look so pretty can't wait anyways we love you guys and we hope you have a wonderful day Mwah.